<laughs> yeah, so I found out that I had a chance of getting the exhibit in about November. So that's when I started brainstorming with Professor Shea on ideas of what I could do. So we took my old AP art portfolio from last year, for my senior year, looked through it and figured out which artwork would translate best to the wall. And so I didn't exactly, I didn't, wasn't very sure on it if like, I liked the original artwork because it had been over a year. And so I ended up taking it over winter break and I read it twice until I was satisfied with the final result. And that is what I used for my reference photo for the exhibit. So I found out right before Christmas break that I got the exhibit. And so I knew that I would spend, I would only have a week really to complete it. And so I had, to, it had to be not too detailed but good enough to actually be in the exhibit and detailed enough to actually show what I wanted to show. So I had to take this one single artwork out of my 15 original artworks and try to have a meaning for it that I liked and that I really connected to. And so this, with this one, I decided to focus more on my experience as a woman and as a um, freshman in college in a new world. I'm from Pennsylvania in this tiny, safe little town, and then I moved to Shreveport in June, and that was very different. <laughs> it's a very different environment. There's different dangers associated with that. And I watch a lot of true crime, which doesn't help with the feeling of danger, <laughs> exactly, because you hear about all this horrible stuff that happens to specifically women. And so, I am very careful. I carry around pepper spray. I lock my car doors, all of this stuff, just to try to keep myself safe and have peace of mind. I have people walk me home at night. And it's all this stuff that I do without even thinking about it that I just take for granted that I have to do, that I want to explore the, almost, the injustice of it. The feel, like I shouldn't have to feel like I need to be walked home. I shouldn't have to carry pepper spray on my wallet. It's a very scary kind of feeling to always know that my safety could be in jeopardy when I'm in public. And so I wanted to create an artwork that wasn't smiling. A lot of women are smiling in artworks or they're doing household chores. Or in these artworks they're doing over here, they're doing their hair. They're posed in these positions that make them seem like objects to be looked at. But I wanted to create an artwork that knew you were looking at it and didn't like to be looked at. And that's the realness of it, is that not everyone wants to be looked at when they're in public. Not everyone wants to be seen. And if you, I don't know about you, but if I notice someone's looking at me in public, I'm not smiling. I'm just concerned. So I wanted to create something that shows the uneasiness of being looked at when you don't want to be and not knowing what someone's intentions are for you. So this took a week to do, and the first few days, the first day and a half, I had to spend preparing the walls. And my mom helped me with that, and Professor Shea helped me with that. And then we immediately started working on creating the artwork for three and a half days, and it took about 50 hours. Any questions? So that was, I didn't, ex didn't know what to expect because my original artwork is done on paper. So I was like, okay, good, I'm practiced, I've done it. I know how to make it on a wall. But then I kind of forgot that paper is not the same as a wall. So I was concerned about, like, if people touched it, would it smear off? Because if you touch paper and there's charcoal on it, it'll smear off. And that doesn't happen on a wall, which is great, because then if people touch it, it's going to be an exhibit. People are going to walk in it. So I was afraid about that. 
but it also means I can't blend as well as I did originally, which was a struggle because I wanted to, I wanted to make these very smooth transitions, I wanted to make it very realistic, and I realized it had to become more graphic, it had to look more, almost like pop art. It couldn't be this realistic drawing, it had to be more of a character. And that was a struggle at first, I blended so hard until like my fingers were raw trying to <laughs> make it the way I wanted it. And then I realized I just had to accept the way that it was and that the, it's a different material, a different medium. And so eventually I, I embraced it and it became more fun because I could just let go of the feeling of perfection. Any other questions? Next year we need to do another exhibit. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. <laughs> But can you imagine painting? Oh, I would love to paint. paint. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've been doing charcoal for the past two years, pretty much just strictly charcoal and pencil, because my art portfolio last year was entirely charcoal. And so it'd be nice to experiment with paint. And like, I don't know if I would do it as big, but because that would be more intense with paint. So it would have to probably be smaller individual paintings. Yeah, I don't know what I would do, <laughs> or the subject, or anything. What's been your like favorite part of like the whole experience of like having your exhibit in the meadows? I think it was really cool to have people like that I knew, or even were like my friends and acquaintances. They suddenly wanted to come here and see my exhibit, so I'd randomly get tagged on Snapchat and on Instagram of people just like seeing it and being so excited for me. And then putting up the posters, it felt a little strange because I was doing it myself. It was like, here's my art, please come see it. It felt a little like I shouldn't, like a shameful, like I shouldn't be like praising myself <laughs> almost. And, but people gave me praise anyways and made me feel really loved. So that was in a weird way surprising. I don't know why, <laughs> but it was, yeah. Were there comments about the work that surprised you, or was not what you intended? Yeah, um, one guy said that he thought it was that the trees were the people watching her, and I was like, I did not see that at all. So I was very intrigued by it. But I said yes. <laughs> I just said yes because <laughs> he was feeling pretty good about it, and yeah, it can be interpreted that way. What was it like turning a two-dimensional artwork into a three-dimensional? It was surprisingly not hard to visualize once we figured it out. Um, it was more the physical labor of it <laughs> that took me by surprise because I was standing for like 10 hours, sometimes 12 hours a day, and I was on a ladder for most of it. So every time I'd get home, I would just be like, oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> and like, I would have to just wake up the next day and go back to it. So it wasn't much of a break in between sessions. So it was a challenge in itself, but I had good podcasts and good music and good people to talk to. So it, was, it worked out.